Some of you might know that I use Adobe Presenter Video Express to record most of the videos that I post on YouTube. What you probably don't know is that when I first started doing YouTube videos, I actually used Adobe Captivate's video demo feature to record these tutorials and upload them to YouTube. The reason I switched to Presenter Video Express was that it allowed me to record my webcam as well. With the launch of Adobe Captivate 2019, however, Video Demo now has this ability as well. So Video Demo is available right from your new project window when you first launch Adobe Captivate. Alternatively, you can select your file drop-down menu, choose Record a New, and then select Video Demo from here. And then you'll be presented with a much smaller interface, a little more simple than the full Adobe Captivate interface. And there's some choices for you to make. Obviously, you're seeing a preview of webcam view here, and uh, we'll talk about that in just a moment. So when you're recording a video demo, you can record uh, one of three different choices, and there's some sub-choices within each one of these as well. So you can select a particular screen area. You can choose a custom size and you can set that up accordingly. Or you can choose full screen and then select which monitor if you happen to have multiple monitors as I do. Alternatively, you can select a specific application and simply record just that application. In this case, I'm actually going to be recording Microsoft Word. So I'm going to stick with that. And you can choose, of course, to uh, record the entire application window, an application region, for example, just this bottom document area could be selected. Or again, I can choose a custom size of my choosing. Also available is webcam only. So if you only want to record your webcam, you can select that as well. And that's going to simplify the interface quite a bit, as you can see. But again, I'm going to go back to application. We're going to choose uh, Microsoft Word, and we're going to choose the application window itself. Now, if you are choosing a smaller region or a smaller custom size, you could select panning, and this would uh, allow you to automatically pan the screen capture portion of your recording. I usually don't do this. Uh, it's something you can actually do once you're editing your, your video, once you're done. The other thing I would normally do is I would select my microphone from here. But since I'm already using my microphone for this recording, I'm just going to leave this as no narration for now. Finally, there's the Logitech webcam that I'm using here available. Uh, I use an external uh, webcam because the one that's, of course, built into my uh, laptop is absolutely horrendous. As you can see here, this is a terrible, terrible webcam. So I stick with the Logitech webcam. Uh, if needed, uh, certain applications make certain sounds as well. So you can turn on system audio to record those. And uh, down here at the bottom is an opportunity to go into the settings, the preferences for video demo, and you can make whatever changes that you see fit down here. I'm just going to hit cancel and return back here. Now, the thing about webcam recording is that you can do what I typically do, and that's just simply record your webcam just as it is. I don't make any changes. But if you want to be extra fancy, you can change the background. One of the reasons I don't do this is I've never had a lot of success with this, mostly because I just record in my regular working office, and I don't really want to set up a big green screen or... Uh, set up a, a background or paint my wall a certain color. Uh, but if you really wanted to make that type of video, you certainly can. I'll walk you through the process of isolating yourself from your background, uh, but I won't be using it uh, myself. So let's click on the change background option here. The button changes its label and becomes take my snapshot. So you need a, a snapshot of yourself. So three, two, one. There we go. And you need to mark yourself by drawing a line from your face all the way down. So I'm going to start way up here and draw straight down. So you can see where I run into problems. That picture frame in the background, the curtain behind me that blocks out the outdoor light, uh, never really works well. So I'll just 
come up with uh what's well, not isolate okay there we go <laughs> that's not bad so once you are fully selected and we'll pretend that i am you just click this button here and then it gives you a preview of what you're going to look like in the webcam and if you think it looks pretty good you can click my preview looks good and of course you can now click anywhere on this preview to change the environment that you're in so if you want a nice you know, I'm on the North Pole and I'm, it's a blizzard, it's a snowstorm or whatever. I could choose that. I could choose a nice image of the dock at, uh, uh, at sunset or sunrise. I'm not sure which. This, uh, I want to call your attention to this checkerboard thing. A lot of people think, oh, well, why would I want a checkerboard? This is actually transparency. So if you wanted to create the effect that you are hovering over top of your desktop recording, uh, this would be the choice that you would use. So I'm going to back out of this because I'm not going to uh, use that. But once you're ready to record, you've got everything set up the way you like it, you can hit the record button here. And it's going to record the webcam that you're seeing here. You'll see a preview off to the right-hand side. And I'll be able to demonstrate whatever feature I'm teaching in Microsoft Word. I'm just going to do a quick little uh, tutorial on how to translate a document uh, from a foreign language into English here. So uh, I'll hit record, get my countdown. Hi guys, today we're going to learn how to uh, translate a document in Microsoft Word into English. So in this case here, I've got the song lyrics for a song called Guantanamera, which is a Spanish, traditional Spanish song. I'm going to select one of the verses here go to the review tab and on the ribbon look for translate i'm going to click that icon and i can choose between translate a selection that i've made which is what i'm going to do or i can choose to translate the entire document let's choose translate selection and as you can see the translator panel has opened up and it's showing me the original spanish that was detected automatically and uh, it's providing me the translation, of course, in English here. And I can choose to either insert that into the document, translate it into English, or maybe I can just review it for my own purposes. So now that I'm done recording this tutorial, I can just click on the Stop Record button right here on the, on the little preview there. And now I'll get a preview of the recording here. So, of course, I can use the scrub bar to just uh, quickly preview through the uh, recording here. I can pause it if necessary just to make sure everything's okay. I can go ahead and export that as a video file or I can upload it directly to YouTube. But more than likely what you're going to do is you're going to hit this edit button and that's going to bring you back to the much more familiar interface of Adobe Captivate. And from here, I can just, let's say, resize my video so it's appropriately sized. And there's a few different editing choices that are available to you. Uh, you'll notice along the timeline here, you'll see two objects. The bottom one is your video and your audio. So that's the actual screen recording that you see behind the webcam. And then the top layer is the webcam. Now, of course, with the webcam, I can move its position to anywhere on the screen. And of course, uh, you can resize it as well. I'm holding down my shift key so that I'm maintaining the uh, proportions of that particular video. And uh, I can do a lot of different things to it. I can, uh, let's, let's keep it nice and large for starters here as I explain what we're going to be doing. I'm gonna use my alignment toolbar. Uh, if you don't have your alignment toolbar open, I recommend that you open it up. It's available from your window drop-down menu. With it opened up, of course, I can center uh, that particular webcam view uh, on the screen there. So let's pick a point um, a couple of seconds uh, into this. Uh, once I've explained what we're going to be doing, I want to show people um, the first step in the procedure here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the video, I'll do a, a, a small edit here by splitting both the video in the background and the webcam, but mostly interested in splitting the webcam. 
because uh, then what I can do is then I can uh, resize the second half of this uh, video portion here to be anything I want it to be. So in this case here, I've made, uh, so after this point on the timeline, this uh, large video will get replaced with this small video here. So let's just do a quick preview of what that looks like. So you can see it'll switch from the big video to the small video, and that works out well. Now, at a certain point, you may decide, you know, uh, during the editing of your video, you might think, oh, well, I'm rambling on here. I don't need all of this. So I'm going to edit some of this entirely out of the recording. And for that, you would want to use the trim feature and just position your, uh, your, your playhead somewhere in the middle of that there. And you could just click on the trim button here. And what you'll be left with is a uh, selection handle at the beginning and the end of what will be removed once you finally hit the trim button. So you can use the regular playhead to just kind of scrub back and forth and decide, okay, that's about right. I want to get rid of that. Once you're ready to commit to that edit, just hit the trim button there. And that cuts out all of that content, both the background video as well as the webcam video. Now there might be a portion along the webcam where you don't want the webcam to interfere with what's happening in the background or to distract your learners from what they should be focusing on. So you can actually mask out what will be um, the portion that you wish to hide from uh, the webcam view using the mask video function here. So again, with the webcam selected at this point, I can mask video. And much like the trim feature, you select the start and end points that you wish to mask out. And then you commit the, to that edit here by clicking mask video once again. And that portion of the timeline will replace with this little icon that represents um, that these video frames of the webcam are not visible in output. So if we just play this back a little bit here, we can see all that we've done to quickly edit this. So there's the full size video, there's the smaller webcam view, and then we switch to this point here where we edited out some content. Now the webcam will disappear. And of course, at this point on the timeline, it will return and continue with the rest of the project. The reason I like using the uh, mask video portion, if I change my mind and decide that I do wish to show the webcam view at this point, I can just click it to show those frames again. So it's a non-destructive edit. And at this point, I can of course then publish this project and um, upload it to YouTube or wherever I'm gonna house this video. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com, follow me on Twitter at PaulWilsonLD, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.